Okay, so in this video, we want to review the notion of differentials. So if we think of y as a function of x, then we can of course differentiate y with respect to x, and we can write this as f prime of x. Now if we think of dy as an infinitesimal change in y, and dx as an infinitesimal change in x, we can multiply across by dx, and arrive at dy is equal to f prime of x dx. And this reason as the differential of y equals f prime of x times the differential of x, or simply dy equals f prime of x dx. I want to write the equality now without the y, so I'll of course be replacing y by f of x. So d of f of x equals f prime of x dx. So this is not just the variable d times f of x, the d stands for differential. So this reads as the differential of f of x equals f prime of x dx. But if you think about the choice of variable here, x is completely arbitrary. Right? I could replace x by any other variable. The idea is, when you take the differential of a function, it is the derivative of the function with respect to the independent variable times the differential d of the independent variable. So I can replace x by any variable that I want. So I could of course write the differential of f of u equals f prime of u du. I could write the differential of f of v equals f prime of v dv. Now, the question I want to ask is the following. If two functions are equal, do they have the same differential? And we'll look at two cases. The first one, sort of an introduction, and we'll see is rather easy. Suppose we have two functions that are equal, and they are both functions of x. So f of x equals g of x. So f is a function of x, so is g, and they're equal as functions of x. Well, if both functions are equal as functions of x, they must have the same derivative with respect to x. So we differentiate both sides with respect to x. Right? If this equals this, then the derivative of the left-hand side equals the derivative of the right-hand side, as we are taking the derivative with respect to the same variable. Of course, the derivative of f of x with respect to x is f prime of x. The derivative of g of x with respect to x is g prime of x. And now we can do one last step. We can multiply both sides by dx. And we can notice, of course, that f prime of x dx, this is simply the differential of f of x, and g prime of x dx is the differential of g of x. If you go backwards, the differential of g of x will be the derivative of g, g prime with respect to x, times d of x. And the conclusion here is, in a sense, kind of obvious. If f and g are both functions of x and are equal, well, they have the same differential. So if f of x equals g of x, the differential of f of x equals the differential of g of x. Alright, that really was a warm-up. Now, what if we have an equality between two functions, but they are functions of a different variable? So what if we have f of x being equal to g of y? Can we still reach the same conclusion? So if f of x equals g of y, is it also true that the differential of f of x will equal the differential of g of y? That is our question. And this may look trivial, right? We're saying, well, clearly, if f of x equals g of y, we're just putting a d in front of both, so this looks kind of trivial. But there is a subtlety here. Think of how we derived the first case f of x was equal to g of x, and to go from here to here, we had to differentiate both sides with respect to x. Now the question is, okay, we differentiate both sides with respect to which variable? 
do we differentiate both sides with respect to x? Or do we differentiate both sides with respect to y? It's not clear, is it? Well, let's see what we can do about this. Let me rewrite this equality here and see if we can bring this down to an equality between two functions of one variable only. So f of x is equal to g of y. Now if you remember, when you have an equation involving x and y, an equation involving x and y will define a curve in the xy plane. And if you consider a point on this curve where the tangent line is not vertical, then y is implicitly a function of x. So we can write y equals h of x. And this is really the implicit function theorem. So at any point on this curve where the tangent line is not vertical, around this point locally, y is a function of x. So now we're good to go. So we can replace y in here by h of x. And so f of x equals g of h of x. And then we can use this result. If two functions of x are equal, check, they have the same differential. Therefore, the differential of f of x must equal the differential of g of h of x. Let's compute both differentials. The differential of f of x is clearly f prime of x dx. Now we must differentiate g of h of x. We have a composition, so we must use here the chain rule. Differentiate the outer function first, g prime, at h of x. But there's still h of x left over. By the chain rule, we have to multiply what we have so far by the derivative of what's left over. That is, of course, h prime of x. Now we have the derivative, of course, we need to multiply by dx, d of the independent variable. And now let's see what we can replace in this side of the equation with respect to y. Well, h of x, this is just y. So we have g prime of y and h prime of x dx. Well, look at it this way. y is a function of x, y equals h of x, so we can, of course, differentiate y with respect to x, and the derivative of y with respect to x, of course, is h prime of x. So if you multiply both sides by dx, then this cancels, and you're left with dy being h prime of x dx. This is your second term. h prime of x dx is simply dy. But now if you think of it, f prime of x dx is the differential of f of x. And g prime of y dy is the differential of g of y. And this completes our proof. We have just proved that if f of x equals g of y, that f prime of x dx, the differential of f of x, equals g prime of y dy, which is a differential of g of y. So the answer is yes, this is true. If f of x equals g of y, the differential of f of x equals the differential of g of y. And this was all due to the implicit function theorem. This equation defines a curve in the xy plane at any point where the tangent line is not vertical, y is implicitly a function of x. And because of this result, and of course the chain rule, we were able to arrive at what we had hoped to be true. So really think of it this way, again, because x and y here are arbitrary variables. So always think of it this way. If two functions are equal, they have the same differential, no matter what variables you have in either case. Let's consider a few examples of this result.
suppose we consider v being equal to x cubed plus 1. Well, here's a function of v, here's a function of x. They're equal as functions, so they have the same differential. So the differential of the left equals the differential of the right. Therefore, well, dv is just dv, or if you think of it in a different way, it would be the derivative of v with respect to v, which is 1, times dv, which is dv. This would equal the derivative of x cubed plus 1 with respect to x is 3x squared, times dx, as x here is the independent variable. So if v equals x cubed plus 1, dv is 3x squared dx. What if we had, say, u to the 4 equals the ln of y squared plus 1? Now we have a function of u being equal to a function of y. doesn't matter. They're both equal as functions, so they have the same differential. The differential of u to the 4 equals the differential of the ln of y squared plus 1. So we differentiate u with respect u to the 4 with respect to u. We get 4u cubed times du. As u here is the independent variable, this will equal, well, the derivative of ln is 1 over the argument. So 1 over y squared plus 1 times the derivative by the chain rule of the argument, the derivative of which is 2y times, of course, dy, as we had here a function of y. And, of course, you can write this as simply 2y over y squared plus 1 dy. Let's consider one last example. What if we had 2 to the w equals arctangent of z cubed. Now we have a function of w being equal to a function of z. Doesn't matter. Again, they have they are equal as functions, so they must have the same differential. Well, the derivative of 2 to the w is 2 to the w ln of 2 times d of w. As we have a function of w, this will equal, well, the derivative of arctangent, if you remember, is 1 over the argument squared plus 1. But if you square z cubed, you get z to the 6 plus 1. But that is the derivative of the arctangent only. There is still a z cube left over. By the chain rule, we multiply by the derivative of what's left over. That, of course, is 3z squared times, of course, dz, as we had a function of z. So in the end, you can write that 2 to the w, ln of 2 dw, equals 3z squared over z to the 6 plus 1 dz. And that's it. So always remember, if two functions are equal, they have the same differential. And this will be very useful when we consider integration problems where we have to make a change of variable or a substitution. And that's it.